Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to start talking about literary elements, including plot and character. Now attached to this video, you'll find a PDF of PowerPoint notes for uh, both of these literary topics. So I encourage you to have that open in another screen make sure you've read through it or have it printed out. That way we're all on the same page when it comes to plot and character analysis. Okay, now that you all have familiarized yourself with the concepts of plot, make sure that you're familiar with terms. So uh, we want to make sure that we know what things like in media rest means, what um, denouement means, what uh, the difference between plot and action, those are really crucial. But in this interactive video, I'm going to give you an example of how um, analyzing plot and plot analysis can work. So. We read short stories, and short stories are different than books or novels because you don't have as much space to uh, develop your characters or to provide exposition or resolution. Things are much quicker in, in short stories. As you read, you want to think about what parts of the story align with the stages of plot and why the author might have made these choices. So the reason that we focus on plot and arrangement and things like this is to consider the author's choices behind how they present the story. Now, I have included, uh, you have available to you on Blackboard a plot organizer, and this can be really helpful in determining sort of the shape of a plot and how things develop. Uh, I'm going to use this um, to analyze Hemingway's Hills Like White Elephants from last week as an example. So, <laughs> the first place that any story um, starts, provided it's not um, in Medias, is uh, with exposition. So what you want to do is look at his like, elephants and say, okay, where is the background information given to me? Where are the characters established? Where is maybe the setting established? Um, where is the sort of uh, introduction to the story. That's what the exposition is. And in Hills Like White Elephants, it's really just the first paragraph. Um, it starts with the hills across the valley of Ebro, and it sort of sets the scene in terms of where they are and what they're doing, that they're on a train, uh, they're waiting for a train to take them to Madrid, and um, that sort of establishes the, the beginning of the story. And this is what we would call the exposition. Now, Hemingway doesn't give us very much exposition in this story, so what you want to be thinking about is, well, why? Why is there so much exposition that's sort of left out? And that'll help you think about, um, of all the exposition he chose to give, he chose to give us this, so why is this so important to us? Then the after exposition, you will have an inciting incident or the destabilizing event, and this is where things start to happen. Okay. Uh, it's the bridge between exposition and rising action. So in the case of Hills Like White Elephants, where do things, uh, where does the action start to occur? Um, we use the analogy of a roller coaster sometimes. So the exposition is when you're pulling out of the train and you're not going up yet. It's just kind of, you know, you're, you're getting where you need to go to start your um, ascent. And the inciting incident is where you begin ticking up. And in the case of Hills Like White Elephants, that happens when they begin talking. The majority of the story is a conversation. And so the, the inciting incident is the beginning of that conversation. What should we drink? This initi initiates the tension within the story. The rising action is the period of the story in which the tension continues to rise and action continues to uh, increase. And this happens in Hills Like White Elephants for the majority of the story until about line 97 in the text. Um, you'll notice their conversation starts out rather um, uh, uninteresting, right? They're talking about drinks and like just kind of making small talk. And then the further into the conversation they get, the more there sort of some steady tension about the procedure and what they should do about it. And um, they're communicating more and more poorly as it goes on. And that's how the action continues to rise. And then the climax is where the tension reaches reaches its highest point. And what's important to remember is that short stories often do not have these big dramatic climaxes, although sometimes they do, but oftentimes that climax is more of an epiphany or a um, turning point in the, in the story. It doesn't necessarily have to have this big uh, fanfare. In the case of Hills Like White Elephants, the climax happens as part of their conversation when um, Jig says to the American, would you please, 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 please stop talking. And the American replies, I don't care anything about it, to which she says, I'll scream. This is the part in the conversation where we kind of, uh, where things change. 
right? We, uh, Jig has reached her breaking point as far as this conversation is concerned. She wants to end it. And this is the most tension that exists in the story. It's the apex of that tension. And so that's what we would consider the climax. So when you identify a climax, which is very important to conflict, which is essential to plot, you want to be thinking about uh, how this climax, as the apex of the conflict, what does that mean for the story? So the story involves a conversation, right? The majority of the story is a conversation. That's where the inciting incident takes place. And the climax of the story within that conversation is when the girl says to the American, can we stop talking? So that also has to do with their conversation, right? So what does it mean? What is Hemingway trying to reveal to us that this becomes the climax then? Um, the fact that the, the conversation has become so frustrating for the girl that she just wants to end it. That's something to really think about. Um, arguably, uh, this is what implies that the, the story itself is not about the, the pregnancy or what they're going to do about it. The story is about their inability to hear each other um, in any meaningful way and um, their inability to say what they really mean to each other and how much um, sort of pain that's causing Jig in this scenario. Now, after the climax, you will have falling action. And in short stories, you do sometimes have falling action, but it is not, uh, oftentimes the climax comes fairly near to the end. So in this case of uh, Hills Like White Elephants, the falling action um, is when there is a scene where the American um, goes to get their bags and starts waiting for the train again. And this is where things sort of start to calm down. Now, things are not okay between the couple very clearly, but this is where things start to sort of calm down in many respects. Um, <clears throat> just about a paragraph or so, again, like the exposition, it's very brief. And then the resolution is where we leave things. Uh, and the last line of this story is, do you feel better? He asked, I feel fine. She said, there's nothing wrong with me. I feel fine. And you want to ask yourself with this resolution, how is the conflict resolved? Does it mean our expectations? Does it defy our expectations? And in the case of Hills Like White Elephants, I would say that the conflict uh, is not resolved um, in the very practical sense of the pregnancy, but the conflict is also not resolved in the fact that Jig is still saying that she is fine, and we know very much that that is not the case, right? She does not feel fine. Um, you want to think also think about how are things different at the end than they were at the beginning. Um, of course, they haven't come to a different conclusion about what they should do, and they they still have uh, you know a lot of problems in terms of their co communication as a couple. But um, is Jig more frustrated after this conversation? Is the American um, more wary after this conversation? How has this uh, affected? the couple is what you want to think about when you're analyzing plot. And these are the important elements of plot development. Now, you also want to think about what this means for conflict. So what does this plot um, development tell us about what the conflict in the story is? Remember the four conventional conflicts. You have character versus character, which is, um, in this case, Jig and the American are in conflict with each other and they're competing wants. They very literally want to do different things about the situation they find themselves in. However, do you have a conflict in terms of character versus nature? And remember, uh, a nature conflict can involve any natural process. And pregnancy and birth are really one of the most natural processes that exist. So yes, they're in conflict over the pregnancy and the natural situation they find themselves in. And that is an element of conflict. And then remember that characters can be in conflict with society around them. And if you've read your um, Hills Like White Elephant notes, we talk about this in detail. There is a lot against this couple. Um, first of all, they are uh, in a place where they don't uh, the jig doesn't speak the language, who's so dependent on the American for that. Um, they're also living in a time where abortion is treated very harshly, um, even more harshly than it is today. And as well, Jig has very few options as an unmarried pregnant woman. Um, either she marries the American and has the child and, you know, lives out whatever version of happiness that might give her. Um, given their communication skills. I don't know what that would be. Uh, or she has the child and she most likely ends up in a home for unwed mothers where um, she will be encouraged to give her child up for adoption. Or uh, she stays out of one of those homes and has no way to support herself or provide a living for her child. Um, or they go through the procedure. So she really has no good options in this case. And she finds herself in a very uh, 
conflicting social contexts. Um, as well, are there any conflicts with character versus self? And this will vary from character to character. Most specifically with Jig, is Jig in conflict with herself? And you see that she struggles to articulate what she wants to the American. Um, and she, I don't know that she really does know what she wants. But um, she doesn't seem to be sure of her decision. She goes back and forth between, well, if we do it, um, you know, I'll do it if you want me to, and I feel fine, to this sort of, she says, you know, we can't have everything. So she sort of realizes that there's, uh, you know, things aren't going to get better for them, um, or that this isn't going to solve their problems. So she is in conflict with herself about what she wants and what she wants to do. <clears throat> Remember the difference between these external conflicts that she's dealing with and the internal conflicts that she's dealing with. And the point here is why. So you want to think about why would Hemingway wait, uh, begin the story as they wait for the train. Um, you know, there has to be a lot more <laughs> to this series of events, right? There had to be, um, you know, they were probably happy together, having fun together at one point in time. Um, they had to find out about the pregnancy some way. There had to be a, a conversation about this uh, procedure. Why, why does Hemingway start the story here at the train station of all places? That's something to think about as well. Why would Hemingway end the story before they even get on the train? Do we see it have a satisfying resolution here? What may be the effect of this? Um, what is What are we meant to take away from this? And why does Hemingway start and end the story um, or use this arrangement for the story? What are you led to believe happens afterwards? Does Jake go through with it? Does the couple have a future? The fact that that's left out of the story does suggest something, right? Um, ultimately, this decision they make is not the message we're meant to uh, walk away with so much as the the conversation that they've just had and what sort of commentary or observation about people relationships life could Hemingway be making um and given that the story is about a conversation the climax happens in terms of a conversation and all of the various forms of conflict revolve around their inability to address the real problem in the conversation um I think communication might be something to think about when you're drawing that conclusion now, as you read, consider the elements of a plot and what they may mean about any story. And I encourage you to use that plot organizer to help you and consider the four conventional conflicts as you're determining that. All right, folks, in this portion of your video, I'm going to continue with literary elements by talking about characters.